Good afternoon, everybody. How is everyone doing today? Great. great. That's great. Good job. Okay. <laughs> today we're here to learn about what is alcoholism. Has anyone been around an alcoholic? Wow, a lot of hands. Okay. <laughs> Alcoholics are known to be aggressive, manipulative, defensive, and insecure. Let's just say they can be a handful. Being an alcoholic is hard on the person and those around them. This can affect them mentally and physically. It's important to know as a society the impacts of alcoholism and the resources available to help. 15 million Americans struggle with alcoholism today. It's a big issue in our country and everyone should be aware of it. I have personally have lived with an alcoholic. My father is, re is a recovering alcoholic and has been sober for 16 years. I've also done research on this topic through academic journals, books, newspapers, and of course my family relations. Today I'm going to talk to you about what alcoholism is, the characteristics of an alcoholic, the phases, if it's genetic. I will also discuss why being aware of alcoholism is, will make you a better person. Not make you. Knowing that alcoholism is gonna, will make you a better person. Now, let's begin. What is alcoholism? Alcoholism is a physical dependence syndrome. It's a disease characterized by cravings, physical dependence. You might ask, what is physical dependence? Well, it's a craving of wanting more and more of something. And this can be seen through nausea, sweating, shakiness, and anxiety. Um, they also lose the control, the control over what they um, of their drinking. There are three phases of alcoholism. And the more we learn about addiction, we can see how um, it molds the brain through experiences. Now, let's talk about the characteristics of an alcoholic. An alcoholic is the disruptive effects of alcohol and um, alcohol have on their lives. They may be aware of what um, is happening to them, but they have to have the desire to stop. And it's usually they don't have a desire. Um, to relieve symptoms, they need to continue to drink alcohol, and the cycle just continues over and over again, which is why the addiction continues. There's no such thing as making a normal drinker into an alcoholic, and they will always find an exception to the rule. Now, let's talk about the phases. There are three phases of alcoholism. There's pre-alcoholic, crucial, and chronic. A person seeks out in the pre-alcoholic stage in social situations. So this gives them psychological relief and they usually do this when there's difficult tasks or they feel like they have to have alcohol to have a good time. Next, the crucial stage. They tend to lose control over their drinking. Alternately, they're remorseful, resentful, and aggressive. And they develop this physical dependence like nausea, like I said before. Lastly, the third stage, they begin drinking early in the day. Drunkenness is always a daily state and it may develop tremors. Now, let's move on to a personal connection. This story is from the AA book. To summarize it, it's basically about a man who wanted to be successful, but he started drinking in his earlier years and he knew he could not achieve his goal and so he gave it up. So he gave it up for 25 years and after he became successful, he was like, I think I can control it again and he couldn't. So after two months of drinking, after 25 years, he was hospitalized and four years after that, he was found dead. Now, how does this relate to personal connection? My father's story is kind of the same. He, for his line of successfulness, he thought for, is to be successful, successful was to have a family and see his kids grow up. And so he knew he couldn't see that if he could continue to drink. So he gave it up and um, he's now been sober for 16 years, but my fear is he'll fall into the same mindset as the story said in a book and he'll continue to drink. Now, how can others be affected by alcoholics? So, some ways are through pain, sacrifice, financial and emotional stress, fear, confusion, they feel like they're not good enough, and resentment. Now, the others that count. Let's see how I interviewed someone who was affected by an alcoholic. So the first question I asked was, what was the hardest part? She answered with, 
hardest part was to see my loving husband turn into an alcoholic and he changed drastically. How did you have this affect her? This affected her through stress. She used all of her savings and she also pulled out lines of credit and she was the only one bringing in income. Next, I asked her, how did you try to help? She talked to him, she would throw out his alcohol and she even reached out to family and still that didn't do anything. Fourthly, I asked, did it affect you mentally and physically? It did. Uh, uh, mentally, she was always exhausted because she was taking care of the kids and working three jobs while he wasn't doing anything. And lastly, I asked you, how did you struggle? And again, financially, and she was emotionally exhausted all the time. Now, can it be genetic? Short story, yes, can be genetic. And people who have alcoholism in their background are going, not going, but they have a higher chance of becoming an alcoholic. Genetic history of alcoholism is the biggest risk factor. Awareness cannot guarantee that they won't fall into the same as their parents of becoming an alcoholic, but it doesn't, doesn't hurt to share their stories. Um, studies have shown that kids with alcoholic parents have a high tolerance with alcohol. Being related to an alcoholic does not guarantee, um, guarantee that you won't be one, but don't estimate, underestimate genetics. People who have alcoholism in their family are advised to not drink until they're 21. Um, but, you know, no one should drink until they're 21 because your brain hasn't developed fully yet. Now, let's move on to treatments and preventions. Oh, no, this is a quote from a substance therapist, Dr. Benson, and she says 50% of people with genetic, um, this genetic gene will become an alcoholic. Now, now let's talk about treatments and preventions. Treatment, we can do detoxification, counseling, medications, tips where you can only drink one beer, drink at home. Um, how can you stay in touch with AA? You can find them through newspapers, police stations, churches. You can even go on their website to see specific groups that tailor to you. Prevention, if you think you're falling down the road of becoming an alcoholic, try to give it up for a year. And if you fail, you might want to seek out some help. And lastly, having a sponsor. This helps with accountability, motivation, and answers any questions that you might need. Okay, to wrap it up, this is treatable. Remember, um, before you need to acknowledge you have a problem before so you can get some help. Um, all these topics you know the whole concept of alcoholism, and they both have a neg negative impact on the person and those around them. People with mental health are, are impacted, and it's important to know the effects of alcoholism. Um, there are six points, like I said earlier, and remember this can be treatable. Thank you, and I hope you have a nice day. Here you go.